Father, with reference in our hearts, with praise, thanksgiving, adoration, honor unto you, we come very grateful for the gift of life you have given to us, for the gift of salvation, for the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the gift of sand earth and supplies of all our needs. We thank you. We love you. We worship you. In the name of Jesus. Father, the form of the worship that we have firstly brought before your presence this morning is the choice of your ways, your principles, your wisdom that is firstly pure, holy, and treatable, that does not behave unseemly, that defers to you. We have chosen you. You chose us first of all. And Lord, we are responding. We choose you. We choose your ways. Help our resolves, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Speak to us this morning. Let grace flow from you into our spirit to strengthen us, to energize us, to make us bold and courageous, to live out our convictions in our daily lives. We will not be threatened. We will not be harassed. We will not buckle. We will not freeze. We will not freak out in the days of the challenges to our faith, but that we will be strong and full of truth. And we will be able to give answers to people who ask us of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus, the living hope, the anchor of our souls in the name of Jesus. It is not a frivolous time. Things are getting serious and serious in the world. You're raising an army, an army of bold, courageous, convinced people who can declare and say, even though he slays me, yet I will serve him. Who can declare and say, even if my God will not deliver me from this physical arm, I am going to serve him. Who can say, like Apostle Paul, that all these things I can't them but dung for the excellency of the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. I can't not my life, this temporal life dear unto me. All I want to do is that I may know him, that I may apprehend that which I am apprehended for, that I may fulfill my calling. Who at the end of our race we can say, I have fought my course. I have fought for the faith. I have finished my course. That will be gloriously rapturable. And we will stand triumphant with the same triumphant at the end of our lives in the name of Jesus. Bold, courageous, triumphant men like King David who lived out his full life at 70 and fulfilled, he served the will of God in his generation. Lord, that this grace be impacted into our spirit man, that even though we may be small, we may be little in our physical being, but that we'll be mighty dynamite for the kingdom of God, putting the devil to flight, getting men for God, taking space, taking territory for God in the name of Jesus. Thank you as the flow of the Holy Ghost flow into our spirit, healing every wound, healing every need, meeting every need, healing, renewing, reviving, supplying strength, supplying joy this day 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you because we are the Lord our shepherd. We lack nothing. We have all that we need. We take our supplies by faith and they materialize for us. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You're welcome to church. The Lord bless you. Are you glad you are a Christian? Are you glad you're a child of God? Can we take our seats wonderfully in his presence? I appreciate God for this opportunity. I appreciate the pastor. And I know God is going to bless us mightily today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in our midst. And if you are a child of God, that you are sensitive to the battle cry in the spirit, we are at war. Spiritually, we are at war. The devil is launching his ruthless attack against God, against God ordained establishment and institutions is launching his ruthless attack against the word of God, fighting tooth and nail to get as many as possible to hell with himself, to confuse as many Christians as possible. You know, as I was coming this morning to church, one of the things the Holy Spirit put in my heart is that each one of us, we, we must make a choice to adhere to the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, as it is written. For it is the foundation of sanity and stability in this present life. The Word of God, the Bible as written, in whatever version you are reading that has not been recently tampered with because we discover that some scripture, some translations of the Bible as they have been recently tampered with, remove words, put certain sentences. And a few months ago, I read an article somebody said that there are some statements in the Bible that have no place again in our modern world, that they should be rephrased. And when people are coming to say that, you will know that trouble is on the horizon. Somebody recently said that they should even begin to think about having gender neutral word to refer to God. And how will it sound if you get to church and the pastor say a mother who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Is that what the scripture says? People are debating. Church of England this week they are debating. Synod has been held. They have written out Prayers to bless same-sex relationship marriages. The uh, Archbishop of Canterbury was saying, the member of parliament can't tell him what to do. And when you see all of this confusion, Jesus already told us, seducers will worse, worse, and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And that's why the scripture says, that they that know they are God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Knowledge and understanding of God will be the stability of our times. That's what the scripture says. So if you really don't understand what you have as a Christian, you, we really need to begin to delve to the Bible. We don't know what is really going to happen. It is possible a policy, a law may go out and say every Bible should be packed away. 
So you will be left with what you have written down in church. You will be left with the Bible verses you have memorized. And that is why we cannot afford to have an incomplete, incorrect knowledge of the word. If it is only one verse of the Bible you know, know it very well. Do not let the devil come and say, heaven helps those who help themselves. Sis, can you show me where it is in the Bible? And you also, you go take your Bible, you are looking for Genesis, you are trying to Google. The Bible never said, heaven helps those who help themselves. So, it's a serious time for us. And I was so glad this morning when Brother Paul was leading and he said, we need to pray for strength. That if Apostle Peter has stayed with the Lord Jesus Christ for three years, and you know that if you see into the heart of Apostle Peter, he loved the Lord. All Apostle Peter was doing was, you know, somebody trying to shield the Lord from every possible danger. When the Lord said, Peter, you're going to deny me, he said, Lord, even if I am going to die. And he really meant it. It was just that. Can you imagine? Only a small young lady said, when he saw what was in it for Jesus, he said, oh my God. He said, no, I don't know him. Do you know that in his heart, he could have left. He did not leave. He wanted to see the end of it. He denied the second time. He denied the third time. But there is something I'm glad about the Lord for. The scripture says God is able to make us stand. If Jesus had prayed ahead for, the devil wanted to shift Apostle Peter. Jesus said, I had prayed for you. I was wondering, what made Jesus to pray for Apostle Peter? And even when he fell, can you imagine that God didn't still give up on Apostle Peter? Peter, he said, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Why didn't Jesus pray for Judas Iscariot? Because I believe Jesus knew what was in Judas Iscariot. You know, there is a place in Ezekiel. God said, I am familiar with things that come to your heart. Even the thoughts that come to your heart. I am familiar with it. God knows. And each one of us, the good thing is don't play church. Don't play religion. Seek to know the Lord. Seek to have your own personal conviction. Your wife may not be around when your test of faith comes, when you will have to stand to defend what you claim to believe, the other brethren may not be there. So it's a personal thing, a personal work that each one of us has to cultivate. The good thing is, if it is only little knowledge you know about the law, hold on to it. The one you don't know, find out. What trips us are not necessarily what we don't know. They are things we know that we do not practice. You know, sometimes as human beings, we have the tendency to say, when somebody say, open to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, and you feel, I already know it. But that word will never go out of season, it will always be evergreen. The scripture says, this what? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. In it you shall meditate day and night, that you may be careful to observe those that are written there. There is John 3, 16, if you commonize it, you are going to get tripped by it one day. We cannot afford to commonize Genesis 1 1. I know it. In the beginning, was. The, we need to read it over and over again, pay attention again and again, so that 
your conviction becomes solidified. If there is something that God wants in the heart of every of his children is that your knowledge of God becomes what? Solidified. That nobody can shake you out of it. It's like when a lady is newly married and she just changed her name. People will begin to call her the husband's name. Sometimes she has, she, it has not done on her. She won't respond. But call her father's name. She's turning her head. So God wants us to become so convinced, so stable, so stabilized and established on our faith and about our confidence in God that nothing can shake it off. And another word on my heart is, my brethren, allow the Holy Spirit to desensitize your heart to money, to material things. Let not a million pounds be something big in your heart. And one way God is going to do that is let there not be anything any amount of money that you cannot give to God when it is demanded of you. Don't be someone who meditate and meditate and meditate and meditate over money because the Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. And when the scripture says that, that means it is impossible you will have a choice to make. We are in the society whereby if you are not very careful, you will stylishly, carelessly sell your union with the Lord for money. You want to work for 24 hours in a seven day of the week, 31 days of the month, the job is there. But what is your choice? And whatever, what jobs begin to compete with your time of union and fellowship with the law, we take your union, your communion with the Holy Ghost from you. And when our union with the Lord is taken from us as Christians, we are done for. The kingdom life is so structured that we cannot function as Christians if we are not in communion, in union with the Lord our God. We cannot function. We cannot function as a, an active Christian. We have to be active Christians in our daily life lively, living, you know, Christian. We cannot function by head knowledge. I discover that you as a Christian, you are not going to be able to stand, respond, think, make choices, make decisions as a living Christian if our union with the Lord is compromised for even one second, we will fail. The Christian life is structured by God in such a way that without being in vital union with the law, Jesus said it. He said, without me, you can do what? You can do nothing, but nothing. You wouldn't be able to make the right choice, the right decision, respond to life, respond to people appropriately as a Christian. Do you know that there are times that silence is not golden as a Christian? There are times that talking is not golden as a Christian. And as long as as your spirit is not in union with God, we will not be able to make the normal response. These are just prelude 
to what the Lord put on my heart this morning for us. These are just charge for us to look on. We are really going to be considering one thing God put on my heart. The title of this sharing is The Acceptable Life. The Acceptable Life. And I want us to open our Bible first of all to Colossians chapter 1. We are going to read verse 9 to 10. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. We are sharing on the acceptable life as a Christian. The scripture says, For this reason we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, verse 11, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. I'm going to read verse from verse 9 again. For this reason we also, since the day we had it, that means that we have heard about your faith, we do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. This is actual plan of God for us. Being born again, accepting Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord is the first stop with the Lord. It is not a bus stop. We have learned it by the word of God. These are a foundational thing that God wants us to settle. Repentance from dead work. Faith unto God. The teaching, the doctrine of baptisms. Water baptism, Holy Ghost baptism. The, God said, I want you to go on unto what? Perfection, unto maturity. Increase in the word of the law, in the work of God, being fruitful. And one major way, it is possible to still be a Christian, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you are not living an acceptable life. It is possible not to walk worthy of the Lord. And God wants us to walk worthy of him. Being pleasing unto him. We read from Hebrew. From about the children of Israel. Two millions of them that left the children. Is it in First Corinthians now? That they left the land of Egypt going to Israel. The land of Canaan. Like we also left our world of sin. Our world of carelessness all sorts following the Lord Jesus Christ to end it up at the end of our race in heaven. The Bible says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased and he overthrew them in the wilderness. Thank you, sir. First Corinthians 10, 5. It, can you imagine... God took two million people. God is such a holy God 
that cannot condone sins, that cannot condone transgression, iniquity, that will not lower its standard for any wonder. Two million people it took from the land of Egypt. They could not allow Egypt to depart from them, and all of them died in the wilderness. Only two of them physically got to the land of Canaan. But it took their children, their seed there. And the Bible says, For we know the terror of the law, we persuade men. As children of God, we must know the righteous, holy, fairy side of God. He is such a multidimensional God, loved, wrapped with mercy, with compassion, with holiness, with righteousness, and that is his glory. But he has told us, he said, my glory will I not share with any. And the meaning is, I am not going to lower who I am. I will raise you to come up to my standard. I am never going to come down to your standard. Because if God comes down to the standard that the human race is now, there will be instability in life. Consider it over centuries. The only thing that has been stable, that has been steady, that has been saved is the Bible as it is written. Kingdoms have come, kingdoms have waned. Emperors rose and they, they fell. The only thing that has been stable in life is the word of God. And if our life will be sane and will be stable, don't allow anybody to come and give a private interpretation to the word of God for you. The Bible already said it. There is no verse of the scripture that is of private interpretation. Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The hardest job we will ever do is what we have done. To believe that God came in the flesh. He became Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. He went to the cross. He died. When you believe this, be true to yourself. When you believe that wall, did you notice a change? Did something happen in your heart? Did something happen in your life? Is your life the same with the life of people who at the beginning of the year make New Year any resolutions? How many New Year any resolutions that have people made and they comply with by the second week of January? When you gave your heart to Jesus, did you notice a change? If you notice a change, there is a power at work. There is a power at work in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ that is not working in any other thing. God said, I want you to walk worthy of me. I want you to be pleasing unto me. I want you to be fruitful in every good work. I want you to increase in your knowledge and understanding of me. And the emphasis this morning, the acceptable life, the life that will be acceptable and pleasing unto God is a life that honors God. So what we are briefly considering this morning is a life that honors God. A life that, may, that defies to God, not to men, not to science. A life that defies to God. A service that will be acceptable. A worship that will be acceptable. Is a worship that is rendered in the honor of God with the honor of God in mind. God said it. 
He said, to this man will I look. To this man will I give respect. He that trembles at my word. God said, Malachi 1.6, A son honoreth his father. A servant is master. If I am your father, where is my honor? If I am your master, where is my fear? The fear that is reference. Honor means great respect. Due regard. Living our lives with great respect to God that when it is God, you cannot say no. When it has to do with God, there is no price you cannot pay, even if it means paying the ultimate price. A life that honors God. A life that defers to God. And if we are not going to be frivolous about the word of God, can we go to Romans chapter 12? And I am going to be reading in Amplified Version. Romans chapter 12. I have not come to sermonize us. I have only come to just bring attention. Cause us to look with fresh eye onto what the word of God says. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. The scripture says in Amplified Version, classic, I, the scripture say, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive, let's begin to note those words, a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties. Do you know the Bible talks about, about people who are inventors of evil things? Would the devil be able to invent evil from your own thinking faculties? The Bible says, present all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed be changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. A decisive dedication. A decisive ideals and the attitude of your heart. Honor is like making somebody, making God so big, so heavy, you know, that you, you, you can't, you, you, what that the person is so much to you, God wants to be so central to our lives that if it is possible before you take a, a another breath, you want to find out from God if it is okay by Him. That is honor. And God will bless the worship leader this morning. Is honor is Choosing the way 
of the Lord. Choosing the principles of the Lord. Relating with God as your first priority. As your vital necessity. That is giving honor to God. And do you know, giving honor to God, it's incidentally God said, honor all men. Honor the king. But we all know that those honoring all men, honoring the king, honoring others, comes, they are subset of the honor we have for God. If you don't honor God, his words, his ways, his things, his house means nothing to you. And if we are going to really be sensible in life, we must have something with someone we defer to. Before you give a definition of normal or abnormal, what are you relating that normal or abnormal to? God is the starting point of life. Simple. God is the starting point of life. We must take our, we, God, we took our origin from God. The Bible says he's the father of all spirits. He created the earth. He created humans, animals. He put us here. So if we are going to live a meaningful life, if we are going to live a life of sanity, we must defer back to God our creator. Otherwise, a married man with a, a child will come back to tell us, now I feel in my body I am eight year old girl. And I need to be taken care of by my mother and abandon his wife and his daughter. If we don't relate back to God, we will we, we continue to see all sorts of absurdities that we are seeing in the world today. And that's when you are going to see a lady go to skin the hair and come back and begin to talk. And I, now I've just realized, maybe somebody is even going to come out to say, now I am a cat and start to walk on all fours. You see? And somebody is going to be teaching little children in the school that there is no biologic body. When that science says no biologic body, whatever body you've got, what you can feel in yourself, you can just decide that one day you are feeling like a fox and you begin to bite people on the streets. God is the starting point. Of, let's carry out our researches. Let's go back to when each society was practicing the Judeo-Christian faith. Let's see the sanity, the stability in lives, in homes, in society, and compare it to these days. When people say, we have passed this, we have passed this, I want to do my own thing, I am free. But we, are, we as Christians have not so learned Christ. God left his throne in evil when Adam and Eve failed. He put them here as our example. When they failed, God left his throne in heaven. He came to show us how to live as human beings. You will see that there are some human beings today, they, they, what is in them, they behave as animals, in human flesh. God came to live out the life that we are supposed to live for us. And if we are going to live that life, if our living on earth will be acceptable, we must honor God. We must defer to him. We must defer to his word. 
We must walk in his ways. One particular person standing out to me from the scriptures is King David and King, King Solomon at the beginning of his reign. If you go to first, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 3, we are not going to read so much, but I want us to go there. Second Chronicles chapter 3. We will quickly crisscross it. Second Chronicles chapter 3. Now this were the sons. Oh, I'm in First Chronicles. I want us to go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 3. Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of honor the Jebusite. And he began to build on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. This is the foundation which Solomon laid for building the house of God. The length and on and on and on like that. Let's go to chapter 5. I want us to see a pattern from verse 1. So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in things which his father David had dedicated. The silver and the gold and all the furnishings. And he put them in the treasury of the house of God. Now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the lands of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel in Jerusalem, that they might bring the ark of the covenant of the law up from the city of David, which is Zion. Therefore, all the men of Israel assembled with the king at the feast, which was in the seventh month. So all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. They brought up the ark, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priest and the Levite brought them all. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with him before the ark were sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. Then the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the temple to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles and on and on. And it came to pass, verse 11, when the priest came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites who were the singers, all of those of Asaph and Eman and Jedutun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, string instruments, and arms. And with them, 120 priests, sounding with trumpet. Indeed, it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpet and cymbals, an instrument of music and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercies endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted place and a place for you to dwell in forever. Chapter 7. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple and the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercies endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord, 
King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God and the priests attended to their services. The Levite also with instrument of the music of the Lord which King David had made to praise the Lord, saying, For his mercy endures forever. Whenever David offered praise by their ministry, the priest sounded trumpet opposite them while all Israel stood. Somebody and some people offered something unto the Lord and literally, the fire of the glory of the law came upon their offerings. That is how God wants our lives to bear his glory day in, day out. But our lives can never bear his glory if we do not honor him. To honor God is to defer to God. To honor God is to do things because of the glory of the Lord. To honor God is to choose his ways. Honor is seen in our heart postures. What is your heart posture before the Lord? Do you know that sometimes... When every, can you see, the Bible says when the Levites are singing, all Israel, what would they do? They stood up. It means even our physical and art posture is a reflection of the honor we give to God. People will say, give him a standing ovation. But do you know that sometimes standing up can mean honor to God? We have seen people worship God, prostrating before the Lord. We have seen King David sat down before the Lord. So your physical posture in service, your physical posture, in your, even in your personal quiet time, your heart posture is a reflection of the honor you give to God. Are you leaning down because you feel your legs are paining you or you are leaning down to adopt a posture before God to say, Lord, I am honoring you. Each culture has different posture of respect. So ensure as a serious Christian who wants to honor his heavenly father to adopt posture that communicates respect to you. Do you know that sometimes standing up why your legs are paining you is a gesture of honor to God. Honor is seen in our words. Honor can be reflected in our words. What do you say of God? The psalmist says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. The psalmist says, the Lord, you are my shepherd. What do you say of the Lord? There is a place, God said it in Malachi. God said, your words are bitter against me. I wonder, where do human beings, mortal men, where do we find the power and the energy to say God does not exist? The scripture says, it's only a war, a foolish man that says there is no God. That means whoever you are, whatever your human achievements, if you, are, or if you are in the class of people who say there is no God, the Bible says you are a foolish man. The Bible is the authority of the Christian. My brethren, don't try to live your life by the standard of the Rosicrucians, of the great messengers, of people of Mormonite. If you say you have given your heart to Jesus, live by the Bible. Honor is reflected in our gifts. What do you give to the Lord? Is it too much for you to give a 
Do you know that tithe is a giving of honor? God said, the tithe is mine. I demand it. I give you your life. I give you the power to war. Give me the first 10%. Is it too much for us to give 10% to God? Does the government, somebody said, the government does not even trust you that you are going to pay your tax. So before you are paid your salary, the tax is deducted. Do you go back to the tax office to go and say, me, I don't want to pay tax. And since generation to generation, God has not increased the tithes. Is it too much to give God tithes? Is it too much to honor God with our offering? To just say, Father, as a token of my love. He that loves gives. If, if your money, somebody said that, do you know that your money is a piece of your life? It's a piece of your life. So when we give God our substance, Proverbs 3, 9 says it, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all you're getting. And do you know that God does, does not take it. He blesses us back. He multiplies it back unto us. When you have 50 pounds, are you looking and your heart is saying, give the 50 pounds, give the 50 pounds, and you're thinking, do you know that everything we will do as Christians, we will daily do it by faith. When we begin to rationalize, we miss out. It is, I am not, God is not saying, don't plan for the future. Don't have a percentage for saving. Don't have a percentage for investments. But do you know that from your spending allowance, you can choose to keep extra five pounds that you are going to use to eat McDonald's to say, I want to give this offering to God. Do you know that sometimes one penny that you give to God can be so acceptable before God than a hundred pounds you are given at times. A servant of God said, God consider our, our giving by the remaining amount you have in your bank account. King David said, I am not going to offer unto God what will cost me nothing. Are you a Christian who loves free things? Free things. And may God deliver us. Free things. Can you put your own money down for things to be done to the glory of the name of the Lord? Honor. Highly esteeming God as the sovereign God over you. I, can you honor God to the fact that when you feel, there have been people in the Bible, God said, you go and make bread with the dung of human being. And he said, ah, God, how do I do that? God said, make it with the dung of cows. And a human being like us did it. Jeremiah the prophet. There have been human beings, even in the days when the Holy Ghost was not fully resident in men. There have been people who go shut up their mouth for days. There have been people, who, prophets, who go say, lie on one side for 40 days. Is it 40 days or months? And people went ahead. There was this prophet, Osea, and God said, go and marry a prostitute. There was this prophet. He was a priest. Is he? he who, who is he? Amos, a priest. And God said, hmm, "Your family is from the people. I have called you as a prophet. Rise up and prophesy." Jeremiah at the time said, "Go." 
People are abusing me. They say, I am a prophet of this. That is what I put in your mouth. Hey, when he made up his I'm going to shut up. And I said, his word was like fire in my bone. I couldn't shut up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That if it is God, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Can we see Apostle Paul? He lived like a crazy man. All Apostle Paul wanted to do was just to please the Lord. Just to please the Lord. Just to honor his name. Just to live for him. If you are on a, an ambitious mission, you are out seeking your own thing. You want to become a professor of whatever. And God comes to say, give it up for me. Do you honor God to that level to say, I am going to drop my ambition and I am going to do this? You are a professor and God says, I want to in a full-time ministry. Do you honor God? to that? Do you esteem God to that level to say he is worthy of my submission? Honor is seen in our lifestyles. Who cut the shots in your life? The way you live your life, your choices, your decisions, your, your guiding principles, your ideas, your models. Is it to the praise of the name of the Lord? Or you want to satisfy yourself? Or you want to go with the flow. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says, and as many as we live godly in this life shall suffer what? Persecution. So if you are not ready to suffer persecution, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a Christian because your ways automatically we not, cannot afford to follow the way of the Lord. A Christian cannot go with the flow. We are, uh, we are the people of the way. The Christianity is called the way. It is specific. You, you, every individual has the right to believe what and who he wants to believe. But be true to your conviction, brothers and sisters. Are you convinced that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? The only way to go. Be convinced and live like a Christian. A Christian is not expected to lie. A Christian is not expected to be hypocritical. A Christian is not expected to cheat. A Christian is not expected to cut corners. A Christian is not expected to be lazy and be a mediocre at work. A Christian is not expected to be a gossip. Live like a Christian. That is the honor of the law. The Bible says we should, if you, I think it's in, it's in Titus, we should adorn the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. The faith that you have in Christ, the faith that you have in God. God wants your life to reflect his power, his spirit, his word, his working, his glory. God wants us to show to the world that God is holy. So if we are going to show to the world that God is holy, we must live holily, unblameably. In this, this word is perverted. This word is corrupted. Different individuals are propagating different things. But God is unchanging. His ways are unchanging. His truth will never improve. Mommy will say, God can never be improved upon. 
God is already a civilized God. He cannot be improved upon. And do you know, you cannot create your own version of Christianity. The Christianity that is not according to the Bible is not Christianity. It is profanity. If you profess to believe in the God of the Bible and your practices, your lifetimes, your choices does not reflect the principle of the Bible, you are living in profanity. Honor means great reference. Great reference. Great reference. Great reference. And God, uh, God wants us to be honorable men and women. He has told us what to honor. Honor God. Honor the house of God. Leviticus 26 verse 2 tells us, Thou shalt honor my sanctuary. Honor this, the, the, the session, Zion session, like we are in church. You can't afford to sit carelessly in church. You can't afford your child to walk aimlessly around in church. Because the king, the governors will not be here. You, as we don't take our children to, to our offices, do we? So, if they are, so when we bring them to church, we are supposed to get them settled before the law. We must never communicate a, a, a carelessness to our children in church. God has called us to honor our biological parents. I'm not giving Bible reference because I know we know them. He has called us to honor our spiritual parents. He has called us to honor our spiritual leaders. He has even called us to honor the authorities of the, of the land. As long as their rules and policies are in line with his word. The Bible says there is no authority that is in place. Except the one God has put in place. So we are to honor leaders, our bosses at work. Honor lecturers in school, teachers in school. Honor the law of the land. Pay your taxes. Don't cut corners. God has called us to honor our marriage. Do you know? I was, incidentally, I was thinking, God said, husbands should honor the wives. So don't come and say, my husband, my wife is disrespecting me. Mm -hmm. God said, you do your own part. Honor, ma the, honor marriage. Honor marriage. The way God has said it. Not the marriage that people are doing these days. The marriage the Bible asks us Christians to honor is what? The true marriage of one man, one woman. That is the Bible. We are in the United Kingdom. There is equality and uh, inclusion policy. But it has also given us the power to honor our own faith. If that is my faith, I am going to respect you for what you believe. I am, you must respect me for what I believe. So you cannot, you cannot, what, what is it called? You cannot force me to accept what you believe. So honor your, don't let the law of the land get into your head and say, and I am going to pressure my calm. There, will, there might be problems in our marriages. Sometimes our flesh may want to come up. But when your flesh come up and you say, I am going to divorce my wife, I am going to divorce my husband. Remember the word of God. That God says, I hate divorce. Remember. And when you have a brother Remind you to say, the Bible says, accept for the honor of the name of the Lord. I 
I am not saying sit in an abusive marriage, but seek help, but let your goal be for the resolution of the problems. Why the sanctity of marriage is kept. Uh, recently, some people were discussing that they discover that many African people, when they come over to the United Kingdom, their marriages break. It should, it, the, perver the perversion is ongoing everywhere. But we are here in this church. And as many as God will give to us, my father will say, they don't divorce in our family. <laughs> because we live, the heritage is the word of God. That's our heritage. Be proud of it. Be proud of the heritage you have as Christians. My brothers and sisters, we will outlast this madness. The it's not a prayer. Whether we say amen or not, the scripture says, he that doeth the word of God does what? Abideth forever. The Bible we out has outlasted, is outlasting, and it is going to outlast the madness that we see in display in the world. So if you don't want the insanity going on in the world to come into your life, honor God, honor his words. God has called us to honor the body of Christ. Design it. Whatever trouble you have in your personal life, let be be submissive to the authority of the church. If you, are, if you have a problem with fellow brother and it is taken to the church, accept whatever the finality is in the church. You have a problem with your husband, with your wife, accept what the church authority says. The Bible says, if we are going to judge angels, are there no wise people in church that believers begin to sue themselves to court? It must never happen. It's a shame. And that comes out of honor for God, honor for his word, honor for his established and constituted authority. And his blessings are there. The blessings of honoring the Lord. If you go to Leviticus chapter 26, it's all written there. I want us to just quickly see 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 17. The scripture says, okay, let me start reading from verse 15. For this is the will of God. All right, let me start reading from verse 13. Therefore, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. That means for the honor of God whether to the king as supreme or to governors as those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God, Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. That fear God, a translation says, refer God. Hold him in high esteem. Hold God in high esteem. Hold God in high esteem. Hold God. Give a respectful regard to God. Acknowledge him. Honor him. Let his word be the final authority in your life. Don't do your own thing. And 
The Bible says the wisdom of God is firstly pure. So whatever is not pure, there is no way we can live an impure life. And we say we are Christian. We are deceiving ourselves if we do that. And I think finally, 1 Samuel chapter 2. I think that's the last scriptures I want to read. 1 Samuel chapter 2. As we rise up on our feet and we're going to go before the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 2. God has many blessings for us. He has many provisions for us. But I discovered something that God is a very straightforward God. He will not lie. He, he doesn't lie. He doesn't cover anything. He said, if you are going to follow me, you must do what? Be able to deny yourself. He told us. He said, come unto me. Take my yoke upon you. He told us. He has not just called us blindly. And it is after we have given our heart to Jesus that we are not finding out. Mm -hmm. You may not fully understand when he calls. But when he has called us into honor, into virtue, into, into glory. He has called us to live with a higher standard. Above the world standard. That your inner motivation for doing the right thing is not so that the government will not punish you. It's not so that you may not be shamed by people, but that you want to honor God. That is the, uh, the, the greatest motivation that I, I am doing the right thing to honor God. I am doing the right thing to the glory of the name of the Lord. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. The scripture says, I, therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father will walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me, shall be lightly esteemed. Can you just close your eyes and respond to God? The great promises of God, it is possible to thwart them if we do not honor and regard them. It is possible to still be a Christian and your life is not acceptable to God. If you do not honor him, if you do not honor his way, that song says, as, uh, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory sheds on a way while we do his good will. He abides and with all who we trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. The only way to be happy as a Christian is to continually trust the Lord, engaging your faith in his word, in his ways, and following and obeying. Speak to the Lord this morning. If we need to repent, let's repent and say, Lord, everywhere I've dishonored you, everywhere I've not honored you enough, Every way I've gone, I've chosen my own ways. I have gone with the flow. Have mercy, Lord, and forgive me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, from today, in a new way, let's receive grace. In a new way, help me to honor you. Help me to refer you. Help me to reference you. Some people will even still be saying, commit it and confess it. If you know the law, you will never, wi you know, you will never willingly commit sin. Ah, the Bible says, if we willingly commit sin, there is no 
propitiation again for sin for boy a, a fearful looking for fairy judgments ask the law i receive grace to honor you to revile you i love that word say hallowed be your name means honor be your name Lord, help me to honor you in a new way, in my choices, in my lifestyle, in my deals, in my, in my, Lord, help me to just honor you, honor you, honor you, honor you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Speak to the Lord, and the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. I choose you. I choose you over everything, Jesus. Just respond to the Lord this morning. I choose you, Jesus. I choose you, I choose you. I choose you over everything. Jesus, I choose you, Jesus, I choose you, I choose you, I choose you over everything, Jesus, I choose you. Jesus, I choose you, I choose you, I choose you, over Jesus, I choose you, Jesus, I choose you. I choose you, I choose you, oh my everything. Let the Lord Jesus know that you choose him again this morning. Just let him know that you have chosen him again this morning. The world would always ask you questions. Choose, choose. Choose, choose. choose. Let him know you are choosing him again and again. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you, Jesus. I choose you, Jesus. Zelito Rito Buski Bas. Him brother Sude Eco Felita Minacom Parus Catebos Ina Macobe. I love brothers, ya come by Hales, you know, my Taila Baras, Zia Matalabus, Shatabus, Shale Barus, Ketiamas, Embrados, Kiba, Jetos, Sina Macalabus, Zina Matalabus, Shatabarius, Ida Motalabus, Ida Huzina Talabus, Shatadus, Ega. I choose you. Let's sing it one more time. Jesus, I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. Over everything. A number of things that the Lord was saying to me as she was teaching today um, the first thing is the Holy Ghost said that the problem with shifting your conviction this is the problem when your conviction shift is that you have demonstrated to people that your conviction can be shifted so they never come back so the question is no longer can we shift this conviction the question becomes what will it take to shift your conviction and that's one of the things we are seeing now the fact that we have demonstrated as as let's just say the church i'm just using the term broadly that because the church has demonstrated at some point in history that our convictions can be analyzed and 
changed and adjusted and improved. So we have shown the world in a sense that our convictions can be shaken. So now the question is, how far can we be pushed? How far can our convictions be pushed? Once you are, once you allow the devil a foot in the door, you know, <laughs> the truth is like a key. You lock the your door, your door with a key. You lock it, and you go to bed. But what we have done in in certain quarters is that. We've removed the key, put it in our pocket, opened the door. And now we are trying to keep the enemy out by trying to push the door. The enemy has one foot in. And now you are trying to push. Unfortunately, you are pushing. You are also now pushing with strength that is not enough. So little by little, it looks like the devil is gaining ground. But one thing God does to iniquity is that he doesn't change iniquity. He kills iniquity that the righteous might be saved. So also we might be looking at the death of certain things. That the truth of the person and the realities of Jesus might be seen. So in life, make sure that your convictions are not shaken. The things you have believed of God, hold on to them. If there's anything that today's service has emphasized on is in, is the fact that God does not change God does not improve. God has standards. She made the statement. She said that God doesn't lower himself to our standards, but he brings us up to his own standard. You are not going to... There is no way you would ever please God by trying to reason him out. The only way you are going to please God is by doing what he says you should do. The only way you are going to... Any God... You know, I've told us before that any truth that you edit is no longer the truth the truth cannot be edited the truth cannot be improved any addition or subtraction from the truth makes it a lie you can call it whatever you you can call it whatever name you want modernization improvement getting with the times but what you have done is that you have exchanged the word of the lord for a lie and we must never do that in our own lives. You know, the Lord pointed me to John chapter 21. I won't read it because of time. But in John 21 is where you see the story. Of, as she was just talking about Apostle Peter, the Lord was just showing me something about Apostle Peter. That his biggest problem, it was clear that he loved the Lord deeply. But his problem was that he loved the Lord Jesus as a brother as a son that's why in john 21 jesus went to him and said peter lovest me more than this if you check the greek jesus says peter agape me more than this peter says lord you know i feel you you feel you is love between brothers between humans respect honor people you will go to you know there are people you know that they are, they didn't give back to you but they will go to the ends of the earth for you peter was like that with jesus jesus now came and said agape thou me he says lord i feel you you agape thou me lord i feel you you the third time was when peter finally got the message because it brought that and the message for us from there today is the fact that you are not going to be able to love God sufficiently by human standards. You are not going to be able to love God the way you think God wants to be loved. You are not be able, going to be able to please God like your brother. You can love your brother to death. Like uh, Peter actually loved Jesus to death. But the day that the tempter came, that the temptations came, those temptations did not come on a human level. They came because Satan was trying to sift him. So when your your human love and human um you know connections will not be strong enough in the days where Satan comes to ask questions. You know, she mentioned Apostle Paul and 
I think I said last week that Apostle Paul spent about three days in water. So he actually spent a day and a half, not three days. But one thing I learned about Apostle Paul, God was just connecting the dots that Apostle Paul was just like the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember when Agabus came and said, the order of this of this mantle is going to be tied in Jerusalem and all that. And everybody was saying, Paul, don't go, Paul, don't go. And he said, why are you people breaking my heart? I'm not only willing to go to Jerusalem, I'm willing to die. Then you find out that he did it. That, it wasn't the first one that acted like that. The Lord Jesus Christ knew that they were going to kill him in Jerusalem. And the Bible said he set his face. So he knew what was... It, Jesus, it, the, the only difference was that Jesus was the prophet prophesying of his own death. So he was the one that prophesied his own death. He was the one that carried his two legs to where they would kill him. So these men love not their lives unto death. I want us to just respond to God and say, Lord, help me to love you. That it, it, You might be genuine like Apostle Peter was, but in the day where Satan comes to check, that your brotherly love for Christ will not be enough. That your, oh, I love Christ because, you know, Christianity is, 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 is seemingly peaceful and all that, all of that is nice. But in the day when the enemy comes to sift men, what would hold you will not be filial. What would hold you will not be family love. What would hold you would be the love of Jesus. Say, Lord, help me to love you like I should. Help me to stay with you like I should. Help me. Help me. Help me. That I will not only say that I love you, but that when the day comes for me to demonstrate that love for you, the grace to choose you, the grace to choose you, at the expense of a $5 million deal, the grace to choose you, at the expense of jail, the grace to choose you, at the expense of losing that job, the grace to choose you, the grace to choose you, the grace to choose you, can we pass the communion? The grace to choose you, 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 the grace to choose you. Speak to the Lord. It's a private conversation between you and the Most High. The grace to choose you. God will not lower his standards. We are the ones that need to step up to his level. We are the ones that need to step up. Yet we cannot step up unless he helps us up. Oh Lord, help us. Oh Lord, help us. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. Thank you. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. Thank you. I choose 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 you. Help me. Help me to love you like I should love you. Help me to serve you like I should serve you. Help me to be bold. Ask for boldness. 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 Help me to be bold. Help me to be brave. Help me to be bold. Help me to be bold. Help me to be bold in my confession of you. Help me to be bold in my confession of you. Help me to be bold in the actions I take. When I'm faced with compromises, help me to be strong. Let me help me that my faith will not fail. 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 Not fail. F- Peter's faith failed because he was built on his brotherly love for Jesus. Whereas Jesus has said, most people will not die for their friends. Maybe you will find one or two people that might be able to die for a good man. But that wasn't the case with Peter. Peter could not die for it. Even when he knew Jesus was a good man, he could not die because the strength was missing. The strength was lacking. Help me. When the demands of life come, when the demand of life come, and my, oh, and my way out is ungodly, help me to stay. Help me to stay. Help me to be strong. Help me to rather suffer affliction than take the ungodly way out. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Pray deeply for yourself. Pray deeply for yourself. The days are coming. The days are here. The days are coming. The days are here. The days are coming. The days are here. 
Ai cobra do sila hande de brande de velato skiba. Debates that were not, or that were unthinkable 20 years ago. Debates that were questions that were unthinkable 20 years ago. Which part of God says, I am he that make, kills and makes alive? Don't people understand? Which part of Father? Does do people not understand which part of the fact that Jesus came as a man did people not understand that we, we the, the 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 you will not hear you will not hear them talk of people need to be saved you will not hear them talk of the judgment of God and the righteousness of God it is whether God is a man or a woman it is every every trick in the book to fit God into the into the narrative of men. But God, you God cannot be fitted into a box. You cannot box God. If you think you have boxed God, that thing you boxed is not God. That thing you boxed is not the truth. That thing you put in a cage and put in your own dimensions is not whatever. You can call it whatever you want, but it is not God. It is not the most high God. The most high God cannot. He said, oh, you built me a tabernacle. Well done. But the half is my footstool. That is the God we serve. So let God be seen. Let God be, ask the Lord that it will be seen through you. It will be seen through you. And only you will be seen, that God will be seen. Just say, Lord, that you will be seen. In my daily decisions, you will be seen. In my actions, you will be seen. In everything I lay my hands upon, you will be seen. God will be seen in the way he shows you favor. But God would also be seen in the way he backs you up when men rise against you. That in every way, you, God, you will be seen. In every way, you will be seen. When it comes to favoring me, you will be seen. When it comes to lifting, you will be seen. When it comes to promotion, you will be seen. But also when it comes to defending us, you would also be seen. That you'll be seen in every way. You'll be seen in every way. In the name of Jesus. You'll be seen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. These are the days where many gods will call down fire. Many gods will call down fire. It's nothing new. Remember in, when um, Moses was in Egypt, he went, he threw down his, his rod. He became a snake. Jens and Jambres, those are the names of the magicians in the days of Egypt. They also came and threw down their rods and they became snakes. Yes or no? If you had left at the point where all the snakes were on the floor, what would you say? You would say, what's the difference? You made snakes, I made snakes. But the people that stayed to the end knew the rest of the story. Bible says that the, the rod of Moses swallowed up every other rod that was made snake prophet Baal was also god of fire you, you know she read to us when Solomon offered sacrifices and fire came down from heaven but you know that Baal was also a god of fire such that when Elijah and the prophets of Baal wanted to do contests I've told us before if, if, if the prophets of Baal didn't know they could call fire do you think they would have agreed to that debate they would not have agreed to the debate. They are not idiots. They called fire routinely. It was that, that it was that was why Elijah was saying to them that shout loud that maybe he has slept. Because on a good day, when you call him, he answers by fire. So Satan would also the fact that Satan answers by fire, it doesn't mean it is God that is speaking. Because Baal also answers by fire. So at a level, it would always, you will not see the difference, but the day will come that the difference will show. By the time it got to the third, fourth plague, the magicians of Egypt said, Sir Pharaoh, this is the hand of God because they could not no longer match the things that Moses did. Like the prophets of Baal could not match Elijah with fire that day. Just said that, Lord, in my life, let that difference be seen. Let my life be a theater for the display of your of 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 what makes you God. 
when you are looking for a soul to display to the world that you are God, let my life be that life. 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 When you are looking for a theater of your goodness, when you are looking for a theater of your mercy, you are looking for a theater of your favor, when you are looking for a theater of your promotion, when you are looking for a theater of your faithfulness, when you are looking for one man to be a demonstration of you being God, let me be that man. Let me be that man. Let me be that person. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, Father, we just lift up your bread and your wine. One of the things we do this is that number one, the Lord Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Number two is that it is the cup of blessing. Number three, we do it to identify with the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. Gave his flesh and gave his blood. You, if there is a reason that you should not be taking communion, quickly, you have 30 seconds to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Because you can also take communion to your own detriment. But we take communion again this morning to affirm the life of God in our bodies, to affirm the life of God in our spirit, for an activation of everything in our spirit to move into our reality, to create a pathway for downloads of the spirit into our natural world. It's called supernatural for a reason. It's not called super spiritual. It is called supernatural. Such that it is an imposition on your natural. So that it is a download of the spirit in the natural. If it is supernatural, it would eventually be seen by the naked eye. The men looked at the Christians and said, well, this ones look like Jesus. It's because they had seen what Jesus did and they saw what this man did. And it looked the same to them. So just say quickly to the Lord, Lord, as I take this communion, let it be that it is a display of the supernatural in my daily affairs every day will be supernatural every day will be supernatural every day will be a story of your goodness every day will be a story of your faithfulness every day will be a story of your power Every day will be a story of your greatness. Let it be, let it be, let it be. That as I take this bread and this wine, symbols of your flesh and your blood, there is a renewal, there is a regeneration. Things that used to be good, that are bad now become good. The ones that used to be very good, they become excellent. Let there be a markup in everything that concerns us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we lift up our bread and our wine unto you. Symbols of the flesh and the blood of Jesus. We are taking this again to reaffirm that we identify with your sacrifice on the cross. Your death, your burial, your resurrection, your ascension, and your glorification. We take this again to declare that we are partakers of everything that you did for us. To declare that our spirit, our soul, and our bodies conform to that which you have done. To download into our physical reality our spiritual existence in the name of Jesus. Therefore, as as we take this communion, as we demonstrate this, let every sickness flee. Let everything that is not of you flee. Let everything that you have not planted be uprooted. And let new plants grow. In the place of shame, we plant joy. In the place of heaviness, we plant joy. In places that we have been reproached, we are honored. In places that we have been despised, we are celebrated. People that have said no, say yes. Doors that have been closed before before us become open. Open before us the two lift gates and we enter therein. Let impossibilities become possible and let grace be multiplied unto us. 
As we take this, let there be a shift in our spirit. Let there be a shift in our circumstances. Let there be a shift in our experiences. Let us see you more. Let us know you more. Let us, let your love in our heart grow. 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 Let us honor you in ways that we have not done before. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You can take your breath away. If you have an offering, just raise up your offering. If you're doing electronically, just raise up your right hand. And bless your offering and your tithes this morning. Father, I bless the offerings and tithes of your people. I ask that you multiply unto them 60, 80, and 100 fold. I ask that in the name of Jesus, everything they are believing you for, on account of their giving and on account of their love and their commitment to you, that you do those things for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, if you well, are we blessed? Are well, we blessed? Um, let's just lift up uh Pastor Busi unto the Lord for a minute. Let's ask the Lord to strengthen her, ask the Lord to help her. Ask the Lord for renewed unction and renewed strength and renewed grace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, next Sunday is going to be interesting because next Sunday we are going to do uh, quick fire sermons. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to message a few of you and you're going to have 10 or 15 minutes <laughs> to to preach a sermon. If you don't finish in 10 minutes, I'll collect my mic from you. So <laughs> so keep your keep your eyes on the on the clock. But brace yourself, it's going to be fun. <laughs> you're smiling. Next Sunday. So if you if if I ping you and God help you, you don't open your f- telegram until until Saturday night. <laughs> God help you. Don't say I've not warned you now. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ready to go home. I am. You said yes. Oh, quick announcements. Um, on Wednesday we'll continue our Bible study. On Sunday, on on Friday we have vigil. You cannot escape. <laughs> on Friday, you have vigil, and then we'll see you again on Sunday. For all those that have joined us online, God bless you. Those that would read this, listen to this again, the Lord bless you and help you. You're ready to go home. Just lift up your right hand to Jesus and just commit your ways to Him. Just commit your ways unto Him. If there's something you need God to come through for you today, this week just mention it to him god wants us to be selfless but god also wants us to ask when we are in need a father wants you to be committed to the family business but your father is also not against you asking when you need that was the mistake of the of the of the guy that was no prodigal he wasn't prodigal but he was clueless he had everything and he didn't open his mouth. And as long as he didn't open his mouth, he got nothing. The father didn't wake up one day and say, Oh, my, my son, you have been working, so I'd go take a goat and kill. Whereas if he had asked, he would have been parting once a month if he wanted. So just ask. Say, ask until your joy is full. Say, Lord, we ask. And Lord, I declare everything they're asking for you do. For your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I bless this ones in the name of your Father. Bless this ones in the name of the Son. Bless this ones in the name of the Holy Ghost. This week, let there be a demonstration of your goodness. Let there be a demonstration of your faithfulness. Let there be a demonstration of the grace upon the call of our Father in their lives. In the name of Jesus, every need is met. 
every sickness vanishes and when we come together next sunday will be a, it will be a nice time in your presence because you will be glorified and you will be seen you're blessed in the name of jesus amen um uh scripture uh, Zechariah chapter 4 where is it it has vanished oh thank you this is the word of the lord put your name your name except your name is Zerubbabel. this is the word of the lord to israel to the full redemption chapel uk church not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord of hosts who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, before me, before Israel, before all of us, you shall be made plain, and it shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it, grace unto us in Jesus' name. Also, the inauguration of the Lagos Church was this morning. You can, you can catch up on it on their, on their own YouTube channel. Yes. Everybody must have their own YouTube channel. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, it's also on, of course, it's also on Daddy's main channel. So, Lord bless you. See you next week. Brace yourself. Don't say I have not warned you. I have warned you.